Okay guys, I'm back here on the Studebaker this morning. Yesterday I came out and pulled the dash out, or at least 95% of the way. Um, my plan for that is uh, I'm just going to replace all the wiring in the car. Um, I started kind of poking around yesterday. Um, testing for voltages and voltage drop and all that kind of good stuff um, at various places that I could access and I'm just getting all kinds of crazy numbers like anywhere for, I mean literally the entire range from zero volts up to 6.3 um, there's just so much voltage drop and I actually brought my good snap-on meter home and was using that so it wasn't like it was the, the my little cheapo meter I think that the only electrical circuits in the car that worked um which well let me show you i'll hook the battery up since it's conveniently actually in the car rear dome light i'm gonna open the rear door which i can't because it's locked look at that <laughs> that still works all the way back there with the door switch uh let me check the other side actually see if that one works but the horn did work, as you guys may have seen in that one video when I'm cleaning. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. Both, both rear door switches still work. So at first I thought, well, I'll just replace one wire at a time. Like I'll leave the existing harness in place and uh, just run one at a time. Then I just started thinking, you know, that's probably just kind of idiotic really um i have over here uh classiccarwiring.com this was about 26 dollars shipped it's a laminated eight and a half by 11 i want to say you can get a bigger one it's got all the wiring for the car color coded um i could write on this with like you know those old uh dry erase markers or something like that um so i've got an entire diagram there I think the best thing to do is just come back here and because I mean most of the wiring runs up into the dash somehow or at least half of it does and you can see look at this they're just there's just nothing left I just sell this over here too you know they're just bare I don't know if you know if any of that stuff is touching um metal it could be shorting out i mean it didn't seem like anything was shorting out but nothing worked except the dome light um this light didn't come on it might be burned out who knows but i'm basically gonna just you know so this right here is the the ammeter or the amp gauge i'll write like a one and a two i use my little label maker Right here, thanks to my buddy Brandon, actually uh, gave me that. I already started putting a few labels on. Yeah, there's one like right here. It was the front heat switch. So it's the heat switch front terminal is what that is. Um, here I'm just gonna put like a number one and two. So I'll just put like amp one, amp two, put the um, label over the wires. And then I'm going to try to pull the whole harness out of the car as close to being intact as possible and then just recreate it. I'm just going to buy some wiring, different, you know, figure out what, how much I need of each gauge. This stuff is pretty thick. Uh, I think this is probably the thickest here going to the amp gauge. It's probably like a 10 gauge wire. And then the rest of them I think are probably like 12 or 14 maybe. Like, like for this little light bulb, that's probably like a 14. You have to have a little bit thicker wire for 6 volt. Because you're going to have more amperage going through the wire than you would with a 12 volt system. So unfortunately, most of the wiring that I have from old Toyota harnesses is, is just way too thin to use in this car. So I'll have to buy some wire. You know, I mean, you get the floors practically missing. You can see I kind of laid in some plywood and stuff just to keep me from falling through and just laying on that um, 
rusty floor. That's kind of the plan. I'm probably going to start with the dash and it's already pulled out. Um, as far as removing the dash, it was kind of a pain, but probably mostly just because I wasn't quite sure how it came out. Um, the first thing I did was I pulled the radio out, which is held in with that J bolt and wing nut in the back. And then there was two long bolts um, towards the front of it. And I was able to just kind of pull it out. And then uh, the dash is held in with these. There's two of these studs on either side to go there. And then at the bottom, you can see right there, there was two more uh, bolts there. You have to pull the, the rear view mirror off, which sits there. And actually, you can see the original color there. It looks pretty, pretty gray, actually. Like perfect paint underneath the rear view mirror. As far as the instrument cluster, um, there were like studs. Let me show you. There were these that screwed into. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they, they went in here. I'm not sure why it's not screwing in right now. Oh, I know why. Because this, this is what holds the chrome trim that um, goes around the, the cluster on the outside. So this goes in this hole, screws into that. And then the cluster sits here and then has another little 3 8 uh, nut on the other side. So there's four of those. Um, you can kind of push it back. You have access to the like barrel nuts or whatever you want to call them. You also do need to undo the steering column. There's these, there's a, like a clamp here. It had a through bolt and then these uh, studs right here. You have to take those nuts off, which you can get this way once you've taken the cluster loose. You kind of push it back and you can get up on top of that. Most of the switches have little set screws in the bottom of the knobs so like right here this is the headlight switch there's this little set screw right here you can just unscrew that they all came out pretty easily for me and you can pull the knob off and then there's just a little nut behind it that holds it in the dash and you can just slide it right out because when you're under the dash it's kind of hard to see where it goes so yeah i just put like uh h1 2 and 3 and then labeled it h2 there probably the biggest pain was the e-brake and this is well this is basically why it's still the dash is still actually in the car is because um this was kind of a pain to get out you have to loosen this nut um there's one on either side of the firewall so i loosened that side i couldn't see any way of just pulling like this handle off to allow the dash to slip off of it to where this could stay like most of this could stay in the car. I couldn't see that, at least with it in the car. I'm not sure if there is a way or not. So I just figured I had to pull it all the way out. Basically now I just have to pull this bottom piece off. It just was caked in mud and I'd been spending like, probably like four hours yesterday doing this and I was just done. I was hungry and <laughs> yeah. So I stopped, I gotta do that, figure out how to get that off because it wouldn't fit through the hole with this, this nut still in there. But that's all it's holding that in. You know, seeing that the engine runs, uh, seems like it, it will run just fine. The transmission seems to work pretty good. It goes right into gear immediately. There's no delay when I, you know, hit the gas, it, it moves like sharply. I don't know, um, you know, it doesn't feel like it's slipping. I've driven it just a couple feet, but you know, I don't really know until I actually take it out on the road, but I feel like it's good enough to move forward with other things like the wiring and just trying to make the car a little bit more of a car so i have the idea of trying to see if i can have some kind of a cobbled together exhaust system on this thing um, using this like a 2020 corolla uh, rear muffler section um, it was just they backed into like a curb or something and, and pushed the whole exhaust a little bit forward and uh, Another guy at my shop just went ahead and replaced it. I mean, I would have probably done the same thing, um, but it's a perfectly good muffler and, you know, about maybe six feet of various sections of uh, pipe and elbows and things. Um, this measures 
inch and three quarters, where what's on the car is an inch and a half, so it may slip over the old pipe. Prettiest cut in the world. I just got it cut almost all the way through right there, but it should come off pretty easily if I just swivel up. I gotta take this little hanger off right here. All right, guys, there is the dash all the way out of the car. Um, you can kind of see the original color like the perfect pristine paint under the the rear view mirror definitely is like kind of like a medium gray um maybe a little kind of a taupey color so i probably will end up um just repainting that like a medium gray light gray something like that uh, i figure while it's out i mean it shouldn't be too difficult to do that there's the um what Twitter would call a combination meter, but most everyone else would call it an instrument cluster. Um, gonna be interesting to see if I can restore this. There's a lot of rust inside of there, which it's hard to say um, how easy that will come off. But that'll be a little bit of a challenge. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's, actually I don't know, yeah. Pretty sure that's glass probably why it's still so clear but i've also pulled all the harness out of the dash area that's been pulled through those two holes up there and up under the hood but just take a notice here for a second this car is on a pretty steep slant as you can see that that door check and yes that is what that is called the little thing that holds the door open when you're supposed to be on a you know when you're on a hill is called the door check it is working it is holding this door open that's impressive i'm sorry that's impressive there's much newer cars that don't do that there here is the harness um actually i stopped because i ran out of label tape for the label maker um but i labeled pretty much everything and what i wasn't able to label because there was a couple things that i think i had taken off already um off like the ignition switch and stuff like that because i ran this wire for the ignition switch um which was that was working um but i'm gonna start doing the wires that are under here like off the voltage regulator and there's some wires going over there for like the heater motor um, that's a separate harness anyway so that's good but it's going to be coming down here now there's a bunch coming up this way which a lot of these i don't know what they do so what i can trace possibly trace to the other side of the harness i'll be able to see what they actually do and then there's part of the harness right there it goes to the back which would just be like brake lights trunk lights fuel gauge sender probably about it shouldn't be too much running back to the back of the car most all of it is under the hood and behind the dash. There is the exhaust that I put together. It's kind of laid out to about where it's going to be in the car. That'll just slip right over a piece that I cut off off of the the front pipe that's, that was still intact or was still good metal. It just slips right over it. I can put a clamp over that so I can uh, at least easily remove it if I need to. Um, the bolts holding it on to like the exhaust manifold might be okay i just figured let's not press our luck and break one of those off put that on i'll just i'll just clamp that i won't worry about welding it unless it leaks really bad for some reason but the muffler will sit right basically right up in there which i think is pretty much where the original muffler was because if you see here's the, this is just pipe going back and i get the rest of this out of here but i got another little one of these doodads here actually there it is right there and that will fit right over the tailpipe and it'll sit right perfectly where it should so if i ever wanted to if the rest of it ends up working out pretty good which i think it should i can just cut this off and run more pipe all the way out to the back 
but for now this is way better than nothing um, i did weld these it's not pretty but i'm still kind of learning my welding um what i did is I, I bought two clamps for this this little setup and i'll end up using um i guess i'm only going to really need one of them which would be that one up there i guess theoretically if i could leave one back here or something like that uh if i, if I really wanted to but I mainly just used them to clamp the pipe down, squeeze it pretty tight, and then weld it, which there probably doesn't really do much because I weld it way up here. But on this part, um, I think it probably helped a little bit more. What I did here was I couldn't quite get the right angle with the pieces I had left over. Like this is from that Corolla muffler section there. Just try to eyeball the angle the best I could and then I ran a piece of the original tailpipe through all of this to kind of keep it all lined up and then this is actually a coupler this is a one of those right there it was a two and a quarter inch coupler that I had laying around that I just cut some material out of I think it's on the bottom yeah so I just cut you know maybe like a half of an inch out of it so it would squeeze down tight with the clamps and then I just welded it all up. It's gonna cut that little hanger off so it doesn't just stick down. Um, this little swoop here is probably a little bit lower than the original was, but it shouldn't be more than like an inch or two. And at least it's a nice smooth transition. So like if it did hit on something, which I mean, I, I don't really think that it will, it shouldn't just snag on anything and tear it off. All right, got the, the exhaust installed. You can see it up in there. Um, it's not hitting the drive shaft, and like that little guy fit pretty much perfectly right where the old one was. I basically just kind of fit the muffler where it seemed to fit the best it could, and then just kind of mocked up everything else. Um, it was rubbing the frame a little bit right there. I just kind of Took a pry bar and just bent it down so now it's not touching so everything is just free it's only got that one hanger right now and it's just clamped on right up there if this little swoop ends up being too much um i can redo this later on i actually bought this this piece right here but i didn't have enough straight pipe i bought the three that were in stock at the advanced auto parts and uh just kind of made it work with what I had. I did get this too, which I could use this, you know, but I would need another one of those pipes. So if this seems like it's going to be a problem, I can always do that and just you know, remake the thing. But at least we got something on there. All right, got it back on the ground. The exhaust is in there. It's definitely hanging a little low on the front, but it should be fine for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can do a cold start. It hasn't been started in probably about a week I'd say. That's pretty quiet. 
even with the leak, it's actually pretty damn quiet. I mean, it's almost like a normal car. Well, how was it? <laughs> That's pretty amazing, though. At least for just putting around, you know, at first. I think the idle speed needs to be increased. But like let it go all the way. All the way down, it kind of starts doing that surging a little bit. But if you rev it up, it doesn't. Right there is pretty good. But if I like pull it back to where it stops, it kind of starts doing that. I think if I just increase the idle a little bit. I think for the most part, that's pretty good. Though. 